Jeremy, I wanted to ask you, uh, this whole world of streaming is really coming into focus, and particularly at CES, uh, and um, there's a lot of opportunities. What do you think innovation should look like around streaming, and what are some sort of uh, things that you hope to see from Warner Media, but from the industry moreover? Well, speaking from Warner Media, obviously HBO Max is the thing we're the most excited about. Speaking from the industry perspective, I think we're reaching a really fun time, right? We started where third parties, Netflix and Hulu, et cetera, came into the market, built great products that consumers love to use. Now we're seeing the media industries with us, Peacock, uh, Disney Plus and others, all bringing their own products to market. And it's a fascinating time because if you think about the media companies, they've always built stuff for consumers, but they've never had that direct relationship before. So I think part of what's really gonna be fun to watch over the next couple of years is how do we all innovate? What does HBO do different than Disney does than, than all the other products on the market? So it's gonna be a fun time. So if you could sort of look into your tool, toolbox and not uh, disclose too much, because I know you can't, what does innovation look like, do you think? I mean, what, what, what form will it take? That's a great question. Uh, I, I can only speak to ourselves in this, in the, in this instance. We're trying to approach this like any tech startup would. So, you know, my background comes from a bunch of years of startups in the media space, but the rest of the team as well, there's, there's people, veterans of the media industry, veterans of the tech industry, and what we're trying to do is use what's called design thinking to get to the best possible product. And that means stripping away all of our preconceived notions, keeping our kind of expertise around, but a lot of questions like how might we, how might we make for example, how might we make scrolling through lists of content fun, right? Because we all know when you're paging through and paging through, it gets to be a little tiring. Sometimes you, you don't even find something to watch, you just go to bed. So that's an area where there's a lot of opportunity. Also personalization, right? When you think of, uh, again, I'm just going to speak of our product, in, HB, in, in Warnerland, we have a ton of content, right? We have decades and decades of content to bring to consumers. So. How are we going to help you find the right thing at the right time? It's a huge challenge, not just uh, browsing through lists, but how do we get to know you, right? How do we understand that after watching uh, all of, uh, of Westworld, the thing you're in the mood for now is an uplifting comedy, right? And someone else might be in the mood for some dark, broody drama. So those kind of algorithms and really getting AI and machine learning into that process is going to be a huge part of the next steps. And we hear a lot about data, the use of data in, in, in determining what people see, advertisements that they are served. Um, what is your thoughts about sort of the, um, the state of, of targeting, performance? Uh, I know that's not, you're not an ad guy, but uh, it certainly fits into innovation. Where does innovation have to go around the ad experience? I think innovation around advertising is a lot about understanding one not, not just the legal changes that are happening to privacy, but consumers' demands for it. We're seeing there's areas where they care very much, areas where they care a little bit less. So how do we build the right product for them that they don't find alienating, but rewarding them for their privacy choices? How do we make sure that they understand, if you tell me X, I can deliver you Y, right? And make that trade off the right benefit. I think Unfortunately, a lot of the internet as a whole doesn't necessarily give the right respect to consumers. At Warner, we're trying to take that extremely seriously because I think, and not just me alone, but over the next few years, if we don't build those trusted relationships with audiences who are seeing ads they might not want to see, feeling invaded, feeling targeted, we're doing the wrong thing. So how do we get on the right track of that and, and really also provide some service, right? So there's long been this history of if you give me the right ads, I'll click on the right thing. We all know we see ads that we don't really fit our profiles. You go through Instagram, you see the same ad a hundred times. My, my posture needs to be improved. All these kinds of things we're used to seeing. How can we just make that a little bit better? How can we understand you more effectively? Um, and, and again, I think keeping that privacy uh, in the consumer's control is such an important step in that. Great, and uh, what do you hope to learn at CES? Uh, what will you be looking for sort of outside of uh, maybe the, the mainstream of the work that you do? What, what kind of things are you looking for from the industry, from innovation? 
For me at CS this year, I'm looking, I mean, let's, let's face it, the biggest companies will probably have made most of their announcements before the show. So what I'm looking for is uh, what are the practical applications for the things we've seen, whether it's uh, uh, giant uh, manufacturers like Samsung, what are they doing, whether it's service providers, um, whether it's the content companies ourselves. I also have to say, I get really interested in going to the um, more obscure pavilions where you see re startups, overseas companies that are mashing up different types of technology and bringing them out to market. I think that area is a lot of fun to see how the technology is coming together. And finally, um, 5G I'm sure will be a big topic. Uh, what do you think the practical impact of 5G will be um, on the TV industry? I think 5G brings so much to the TV industry. One of the things that we all, you know, kind of everybody's done this, oh, 5G is just faster. That's true, but that's not the really big part of it. But the really big part of what 5G is bringing to people is less latency. And anyone who plays video games understands that concept very, very well. So the whole gamer market's gonna go nuts with 5G. Where I think it gets really interesting with content is it lets us do things in real time much more effectively. So as an example, at the Adult Swim Festival, uh, the Innovation Lab actually put on this really interesting 3D video capture, it's called volumetric video, and we had this capture rig, which kind of looks like this sci-fi contraption. Uh, our, our audiences could go into it, do this little dance for 15 seconds. We record it, we used a 5G um, beamer to basically, we had a local 5G setup to send it from one place in the room to another, which might sound silly, but we wanted to show people how with zero latency they could be downloading files, streaming files, interacting with files while they're coming in all faster. Now apply that to video production, apply that to distribution, apply that to creation. There's a lot coming for us.